Okay, we have reached the end of our course and what I want to do with this uh, last video today is talk about where do you go from here, what are the kind of neat things we've done and what you can do uh, with uh, the knowledge we've collected in web design. And what I want to do first of all is start off with uh, two sites I created based on templates. So we used style sheets and we used master pages or t templates as you want to call them. And I'm also going to talk about other things that you can do and add to websites that are sort of uh, web based. Uh, you know, in the cloud, so to speak. Okay, so let's start off with this one. This is a little site I created, which was a combination of websites, style sheets, and ASP.NET. I just want to give you an overview of how it works. I'm not going to explain every little detail, but here's kind of the potential of what you can do with the knowledge you have now. Okay, so here's a little website I made. Got a couple of radio buttons that can switch my image on and off, and there's like a little login screen. Nothing spectacular, obviously, but I'll just type in my num, uh, my name, and then when I press this, okay, it's going to go to the next page, which is the about page. This talks about our course, okay, and all the different components. And watch as I go through each component, it mentions the component and uh, the basics, and the number of periods we spent on it, and the assignments or tests. Flash. We had three units, so it's kind of cool, right? This is data binding. I created a database that basically described all the units and these were like all the fields. So kind of neat and just trying to use all the different potential that we learned the last little while. Okay, and over here we have some basic links. Let's go to the Flash page. Flash page pretty straightforward. It's got some basic links to sites on the internet. JavaScript page, kind of cool. Uh, this pops up. And does a video. Another term you're going to hear a good bit about when working with web pages is JavaScript. Okay, and that's a pop up thing. And um, that's called, there's a, like, there's two of them. There's Lightbox, they're based on the Lightbox idea. And you have a video Lightbox and an image Lightbox. And you can have things pop up. You can have just pictures pop up or video. So it's kind of neat. Let's click onto this page, to the Cascading Style Sheet page. Pretty basic, some links there. Here's the ASP.NET page. Here's a page called Links. And again, I use some of the knowledge we learned from uh, the topics we just covered recently. You press this and different things appear. But what's cool about this one is there's also, when you press this, you can go to a, a link about that site. So kind of a neat example of some of the knowledge we've covered. Uh, contact info, nothing special there. And then admin page, you can even have a proper login screen where you could change some of this. Okay, so that's one example. Here's basically the same example with just a different look. Okay, and we'll open this one up. Give it a run. Now, sometimes when you run these in, you get an error, because I think these are in your demos. You might get something like that. And basically what you have to do is you have to tell the computer, look at this, all these different pages I made, right? So I gotta make sure I point to the right one as the start page, and usually that fixes it up. I might have mentioned that trick before, and hopefully that fixes it. Here's another, this one's a little bit crazier. It's kind of neat though. All right, I'll stretch it out as much as I can on my screen here. All right, so we're good. It's got nice links up here. These are our major topics we did this semester, and some links here. There's a calendar idea I did uh, recently, okay? Gives you the calendar here. Uh, you press this, goes to another page, which has some links there. JavaScript goes to another page, and again, I use those videos you saw a few minutes ago. Style sheet page, okay? Here is just a, is a more links. ASP.net, I, I show you a couple more links. So it, it's just a, a different example. Uh, just to give you a different look and feel for what you could do. Let me press this one. Links. Alright, we'll go down a bit. And this one's like the last one I just did a few minutes ago. You press this and you'll get a little calendar thing describing the basic units in that course and uh, some of the places you can go for information. Okay, and this one has my blogs and a bunch of little links and this has admin where you can log in and things like that. So kind of neat applications of what you could do this year and again you don't have to be very artistic. You can uh, take 
people's style sheets and then modify them to suit your purposes. Now, what are some other cool things that you can do with this knowledge and possibly implement it on a website that you're working on for me, for the school, or for a business maybe that you're going to do? All right, what I want to do is start off and show you is there ever going to be a time when you maybe need to ask on a website people's information and then store it somewhere and remember, hey, we just did that. Well, if you don't want to go heavy duty like we did with ASP.NET because you have to have a special server ahead of time, you can piggy bank on other people's servers and use theirs. So here's something I did for the business department where we're having a special night for grade 8 parents to tell them a, bit, a little bit about computer technology that their students are going to learn in high school and things like that. So they, they go to my blog and down here is a form. So this is the first idea. This is called an online form and it's like what we did. It basically is connected to an active server page that stores all this but I didn't buy that web server. I didn't pay for it. I'm basically using one that's already set up. So I designed this form in the, the program I'm going to show you in a second and then I press submit and it remembers what I typed in. At the beginning of the semester I also did this I don't know if any of you guys went to this site and typed in some information I'll show you who filled it up and again just another kind of form that you can create web-based without you having to buy anything or or go into a, a server system the server is already there for you ahead of time so the the program that does this is called Zoho Creator. Okay, and I just want to go to it for a second. I'm already logged in. And like I said, I, I mentioned I have already a, a couple of them pre done. Let me sh click on this one. This is when a person types it in and they end up going here. Then at this end, I see what they typed in. Okay, so it is like an active server page dynamic. Let me press it for a second in here. And I'll look at the uh, main view. And here's just one page of a number of pages. These were people that went to my blog and typed in information. And now I'm looking at what they, to what they told me. So you know how you have that two-way street? This is from the main f basic form, the main web page. It goes into my database. Very cool. Let me show you another one. I'll go back. Okay. This great eight parents night that's coming up that we're going to do here at Burbuff. Let me see who signed up. Now this one is just brand new, so probably hardly anybody has signed up. So I'm going to click on the registration view. This is how I designed it right here. And then I'm going to press it. And this is people feeding in information. And tell you the truth, right now, Mr. Shirelli, I tested it out. Mr. Tarani, he tested it out. And then we actually have one actual parent who uh, fed their information in. Okay, so that's kind of like a neat application without you having to do anything heavy duty, but what you should know is and appreciate is this is one of those dynamic pages, right? What other things can you do? Well, you can do an instantaneous uh, poll, all right? A little bit like a form, but not as detailed. But basically, let's say you want to know an answer to a question from a lot of people, but instantly. What you can do is, uh, and this is a cool one, it's called Answer Garden. And there's a bunch of other ones here on my Weebly site. Okay, so if you go down polling tools and things like that, this one's really cool because what I, I do is I ask people when they go to this site, type in your favorite web app, all right? And basically it scales the words, like Prezi is bigger than these ones because more people have typed in Prezi as their favorite as opposed to this one, okay? And you can see as I go over them, it's telling me the number of people that voted for it. Okay, and I just put this in recently, so obviously there's not a lot of people yet. But that's kind of a cool thing, eh? To add to your website if you if you needed to do something like that. All right, so that's kind of like online polling, that's instantaneous. There are other ones that, again, go back to a server that you can refer to later on. There's micro poll, poll everywhere, all kinds of neat ones. Another neat thing that I I've done on our school website that maybe for a person you're working for would be kind of useful. Every week what I do from our school webpage is I send out what's called an email newsletter. All right, And some of you maybe this semester signed up for my one from BraveNet, which is another company that does newsletters. This one here, if you pressed it, it would basically take it to this site where you would sign up for this newsletter. It would you know, ask your email address, your name, and stuff like that. Okay. And after you did that, every Friday, that's when I do it, you would get an email newsletter from me. And I'll just show you a sample about 
these are, these are archived, which means you know the, maybe five or six weeks uh, of them are kept on this uh, business called uh, Mailchimp that I'm using. So hopefully it loads up. Okay, so here's an archive of some of the email newsletters I've created over the last uh, several years. I just press one just to give you a rough idea. So basically, they give you a template, and then you change the titles and the colors and stuff like that and all I did was I basically tell parents every Friday some important information they may need to know for their students for themselves or whatever else so there's just a quick overview of what we call an email newsletter and then there's links to things like our school calendar and upcoming events and stuff like that which is kinda cool right now let me just show you which is really neat about this uh, this is the service I'm using it's called MailChimp really neat it's free as long as you don't have like 10 million people that you're sending the newsletter out. If you have a couple of hundred, maybe up to a thousand, this is the way to go. And what's really neat about it, it is it remembers all the people that are on your newsletter. And what you do every week is you create uh, a new newsletter and then you press send and it sends it to all 100, 200, 350. We have about 120 people right now that we send our newsletter out. Now they're not really people, they're families, and some families have you know two or three kids. Anyway, this is what you see. Now after I send it out, like last Friday, okay, uh, December the 2nd, I sent out uh, this newsletter. All right, this is the next one coming up on the next Friday. And what they do is they give me a report, and it gives you a rough idea how many people so far have opened it, took it, taken a look at it. So, so far 52 people, so roughly half the people have opened it up. And then when you press this, you can actually see who were those people that opened up the newsletter. Okay, you know, and uh, what time they looked at it. It's kind of neat. And what they looked at, so, and how many times they opened it. And then you can do all kinds of other statistics like URLs clicked, which means if you had links on your newsletter, which ones did they click on the most? Just for fun, it's interesting to see, you know, what's the most popular? Well, almost always, everybody clicks on the calendar because they want to know what's going on. In this particular example, there was a, a fundraiser that we did, and we also have that on the site, and they clicked on that quite often. So there's all kinds of neat things that you can do and use for informational or statistical purposes. Really cool program. The last web app I want to show you is my favorite one. It's called Stat Counter. And basically what it does is they, they give you a little piece of code like JavaScript or something that you hide in your website. So when you, they go to your website there's no like words or something that you see on the screen. It's hidden. But every time somebody goes to your website this little piece of code knows the person's IP address and what city they're from and how long they were on and what they were looking at. It's really really cool. So I added that little piece of code to a couple of my sites, my regular website, the Cloud App site, the Bubuff site, and this other site that I, I did for uh, a person that has a little cottage up in Wasega Beach. Let's actually click on uh, the Bubuff one, okay? And I'll give you a rough idea what it looks like. So it, it gives you numbers of the people that have come on your site every day for a particular week. Now, if you buy a professional version, it'll show it to you for like the entire year. This only shows me a couple of months, but it's still good enough to give you a rough idea what's going on. So let me click on uh, Recent Visitor Activity, and this is really cool. What it does is it basically shows you at any moment in time who has been on your site and where they're from. So Source Cable, somebody from Hamilton was on the site, then somebody from Mountain Cable, then somebody from Dundas, a lot of Hamilton, Stony Creek, somebody from Oshawa was on the site, and they give you the link where they start, and then they can go inside and take a look at a closer look. Sometimes we've had people from Europe, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was on for about a minute, something that's interesting, and it shows you where they went from there. Somebody from Toronto, uh, Waterloo, which is kind of neat. That's our school website. I want to show you uh, one of mine here. Let's click on Shirelli. Uh, cloud apps for instance and let's see where some people come from there recent visitors uh, Mississauga Hamilton now if I can go down far enough Mexico somebody from Mexico looked at my website okay it's really interesting I saw even somebody from so Seoul Korea one time Meadow Lake Saskatchewan so it's kind of interesting to look at those and get a rough idea how popular site is where people are coming from and all that so these are some of the features and things that you can add and implement on your website that's really cool take care